newspaper article came on me saying that forest man. <laughs> so people publicize like that forest man is coming in schools, colleges when I go, they publicize forest man is coming to talk to you today. <laughs> they expect a Tarzan coming hanging from a tree. <laughs> but I go there, but they get surprised. Is this the man you are waiting to see? He doesn't look like a forest man. I am a man living in forest. What are my principles in my forest? Simplicity, solitude, silence, slowing, slow down. But if you fear, the death comes now. If you are not afraid, you live forever. I read Bhagavad Gita, I like this Gita Pratya concept. I kept the name my forest. I would like to invite a guest, Shankar Nar Narayan sir. Shankar Narayan is the visionary founder of the Sattvic Vegan Society. Always a champion of peace and ahimsa, that is non-violence. He embraced veganism long before it gained widespread recognition. He has consistently applied principles of ahimsa to every facet of his life. The Sattvic Vegan Society, formerly known as the Indian Vegan Society until 2014, was established in 2004 with the goal of uniting like-minded people and giving a voice to vegans while spreading the message of practical ahimsa to people from the all walks of life. Uh, let us welcome Shankar Narayan sir with a big round of applause. Good afternoon everybody. Good afternoon. So I am very happy to see all of you here today. Because so many of you are here. Almost full house. So before uh, let me ask you how much time I have. It's already we are late. Uh, start at 2.30. 2.30 now. How much time I have? You have all your 40 minutes. 40. Yes. 2.350. Like this. 3.10 now. 3.50 I will yes. stop, before 5 minutes you let me know. First of all, let me express my gratitude to all of you. First, to Marley Winkler, <coughs> the president of IVU, who entrusted me the responsibility of finding right people to organize 48th IVU World Vegan <coughs> Festival in India. We had it in three places, Mumbai, Chennai and Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad is the only place which is using vegan word. I am more happy about Ahmedabad because of that reason. Because in all other, Mumbai it was a festival. In Chennai it was different. In Ahmedabad, you are confident. See, it is a land of Mahatma Gandhi. You should be as shy of speaking truth. Veganism is truth. Why you hide behind some other word? So you have the truth before you. So congratulations to Vegans of Gujarat, led by my friend Shika Jai. And one more gratitude. There is no end for that. My inspiration is from Gujarat in this journey. I became vegan after reading Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth in 1989. At that time, I didn't know about veganism. I read his autobiography. I was born vegetarian, stopped consuming milk. But I didn't know anything about veganism. I was consuming derivatives of dairy. Say, for example, tea, coffee or ice cream, that and all, very common. But of course, I was not liking Paneer at all, even now. That was 1989. 89. Yes. Then 1993, I stopped leather after reading an article in Deccan Herald, how snakes are skilled alive for their skin. I stopped leather immediately. I met my landlord just last month. 
landlord's daughter in fact she was explaining me how you stopped all your leather articles in 1993 so like the journey happened and uh, 2001 i became completely vegan and the journey is not ending journey is beginning there so though i became uh, i stopped milk consumption because of mahatma gandhi i didn't know about veganism then then veganism happened then in 19, 2008 i came to ahmedabad to visit mahatma gandhi's sabarmati ashram one more inspiration i'm just saying all inspiration uh, so when i visited sabarmati ashram in 2008 february i thought at that time i was still considering vegan movement is a peaceful movement i was having all positive vibes at that time we vegans need to have a place like gandhi ji had sabarmati ashram for indian freedom movement i that that originated there then i went back and a few months happened then i bought a piece of land i started living there so that is my forest sitaparnya vegan forest so from there this talk derives today so ex- coexisting with plants and animals that was 15 years ago 2008 i bought a piece of land where there was no electricity there was no facility no civilization at all i started living alone 7 years i lived alone there 4 years without electricity and almost 11 years without mobile phones until uh, gujarat's uh, dhirubhai ambani came and uh, started jio network till then i didn't have any mobile connection there i lived there so that is the inspiration that is the subject of my talk here today though i can speak about veganism of late not mainstream veganism it is sattvic veganism sattvic is not about onion and garlic it is about behavior as i told you when i started vegan movement i met marli and many international uh, chaura many international activists very very peaceful people i got inspired by them they were very calm so that was veganism i was thinking about but once social media came into picture i saw other face of some vegans lot of abusiveness lot of aggressiveness lot of fighting then i thought this is not the veganism i am going to propagate this is not the veganism i am representing i am inspired by mahatma gandhi he was a pacifist he was since incarnation of non violence so i can't be part of this mainstream vegan who are fighting or aggressive or violent in a non violent way then sattvic vegan society started 2004 i renamed and another version is due next year actually 2000 1994 i started indian vegetarian association before knowing vegan movement i thought it worth i was thinking vegetarianism is great at that time then 24 4 uh, 2004 started the indian vegan society 2014 it was uh, sattvic vegan society wait for 20, 2024 so it is evolution of my life that is reflected in my activities okay if, this is one subject i speak another subject is ivu i have been part of ivu since 2006 and uh, 2016 i quit because i felt i am useless i don't have money i don't have willingness to earn money also so without doing without having money i can't do much so i quit and handed over the baton to someone else but marley contacted me last year somewhere in september 2022 and asked me to find out people and i'm very happy to see you here marley and uh, so many of you here together generally in vegan events we don't get so many people attending the speech speakers speeches very few people will be there but here you have almost full house only very few vacant places so very good thank you very much so how many of you are vegans here please lift your hand okay quite a number so so that is a flattering number and i am also vegan how many of you want to live a life like me there are a few without knowing probably you have lifted your hand <laughs> if you know 
<laughs> you will run away from here. You will not come and talk to me also. Because as I told you, I live with animals. I live with animals, those who are free, not in captivity. I live with animals who are not confined, who are not controlled by humans. But is it not intrusion into their world? I created my world and allowed them to be there. Okay. So when I went there, there was no one. Oh. There was no animals. It was empty land. Partly inspired by Sadhana Forest. In 2007, I visited Sadhana Forest. Instead of buying a normal house like anyone else, why not I do a project like this? And of course, that fructified after visiting Sabarmati Ashram. <coughs> so when I bought the land, it was empty land. There were very, very few old, like me, useless trees. Now, I at least planted 4,000 trees. And it's a vibrant forest. Unlike Sadhana forest, my forest doesn't need volunteers. Because forest doesn't need humans. Forest is self-contented, self-sufficient. We are intrusions. But in that intrusion, I am happy because it was not like that when I went. It was empty. I have some old photos. And even if I don't have old photos, neighboring land reflects before picture. So my photos, I show them, this was like that before I came here. So now there are so many animals live. Tiger was roaring once, I didn't see in the night. And I saw a tiger just outside my forest another day. And there are king cobras. There are of course cobras. There are vipers, crates, right? Snakes. Then there are of course herbivore animals like <laughs> deer. Then uh, nail guys. Monkeys, of course. I am one among them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, monkeys are there. Elephants too. Elephants are not there. Then the peacocks. They, they are all partners. We are living together. But as a human being, I live alone. So, the topic is, I will not be able to turn the topic at all. <laughs> by the time my time ends. <laughs> because, <laughs> so it is so easy for me. It is like, a river flowing. So there is a river flowing in front of my forest. She was there last year. So she was so motivated, she wanted to do one event in her hospital, Dr. Neetu Jai. So after visiting my forest during the vegan festival, they asked me, why don't you organize one event in my hospital? We organized in March. It was a good event. So why I am saying is, this is very special attraction, that river. People, don't want to listen to talks. They want to listen to the flow of rivers. So it's a beautiful place. But this year there was not much rain. Still, I enjoy being there. It is like a free flow. Smooth flowing. Life is very, very easy. There is nothing much to talk about living with animals. Because no animal harms me deliberately. Because I am not in their food chain. So far, almost uh, 14 years completed, one year preparation, 15 years over. 14 years I am living there, but no snake bit me, not even a mosquito also. <laughs> I have not bitten by mosquito also. I, am, I look like Mahatma Gandhi's dressing sense, only one piece of cloth. But still, no mosquitoes bite me. But people are scared. Those who visit me, they carry mosquito nets. <laughs> they carry mosquito ripper nets. But I don't need any of those. So it is very, very easy. If at all I have to talk about coexistence, it is coexistence with humans, <coughs> which is not easy. But my subject is not coexistence with humans. It is about coexistence with animals and plants. Therefore, let me elaborate a bit. I am not an expert. I am not a biologist, I am not a botanist, I am not a scientist, I am not a researchist. Okay? What I am? I am an animal like monkey, like deer, like baboons. There are varieties. There is even great Indian, what is that? Not hornbills are there. There is one more uh, uh, squirrel, giant Indian squirrel. Those are my favorites because 
they are very rare to find nowadays and i read an article if they are present that is a dense forest that is a healthy forest i read an article about giant squirrels they are very shy animals they live on top of a tall tree there are also a couple is living there so i feel very proud being with them so i am also wild animal i am also living in jungle i am an animal so that gives me happy even a newspaper article came on me saying that forest man <laughs> so people publicize like that forest man is coming in schools colleges when they go they publicize forest man is coming to talk to you today they expected tarzan coming hanging from a tree <laughs> but i go there but they get surprised is this the man you are waiting to see he doesn't look like a forest man i am a man living in forest surprisingly that is my strength also because uh, living in cities living with humans not was not easy even now it is not so easy traveling is so difficult for me i have reached the fragile health when i travel i fall sick quite often therefore i balance a lot but when i am in my forest i am in my natural self i am very strong very good my connection is with cosmos not with human so living with humans is most difficult for that also i got a tip from someone so i was in goa in 2006 before iv world vegan festival 38 i think it was so there was a talk in panaji by do you remember the person who inaugurated dada aswani from pune pune yes his talk is the life changer for me so he was attending a big lecture he was talking and people asked him he was giving some ideal situation ideal uh, principles to follow for people to live then someone concerned parent stood up and asked a question to him you say so many ideal things if you follow your ideals if you follow your principles we will not be competitive in this competitive world how to make our children competitive and still follow your advice he said one thing that is profound even now that is guiding me in vegan movement generally what happens i have seen lot of vegan activists they burn out in 2 or 3 years i am still there even though dinosaurs are extinct now <laughs> right i am still there because of his advice what he gave that advice to win the competition withdraw from the competition that is what he said to win the competition withdraw from the competition that is bhagavad gita's teaching karmanye vadikaraste ma parishu kalachana so do your duty don't expect the result so that is very very profound for me i withdrew physically from the civilized world i started living in the forest and mentally too i travel i meet people i organize events i do everything but don't expect much so in murli shot marli was there in 2007 i organized 11th international vegan festival that's a series of festivals started in denmark so 2007 i organized in india i bet all my money all my savings everything i spent i expected lot of people to come one year i worked very hard but hardly very few people were there right so i carried lot of brochures printed so nothing was taken away but that gave me lot of realistic approach also so like this my experience in aligned with bhagavad gita taking the advice of dada vaswani i am continuing even every time i do something i feel this is my last but still i continue because of this approach to win the competition we drop off you can all withdraw from competition live happy life wherever you are you don't have to withdraw from ahmedabad and come to my forest <laughs> that will not remain forest if everyone comes <laughs> right it will be another human settlement therefore this year onwards or last year was the last event amit tashara was there last year 
uh, I decided no more vegan events in my forest because it is a vibrant forest, lot of animals are there. We are disturbing their ecosystem now. Vegan events can happen elsewhere. Therefore, I decided no more events. And this year I held it in Bangalore. It was a very good event. And uh, it was similar. Gathering was there, it was very good. So the vegan events are not happening in my forest. I live alone, even, even now. I live alone there. But are you not afraid of these animals, people ask. So how can you live there alone, away from people? Don't you get bored? Don't you want to speak with people? So many things, what people ask me are not their own experiences. Yes. थोड़ा हिंदी थोड़ा हिंदी ऐड कर सकता हूं आपको समझ नहीं आएगा ओके मेरा हिंदी बहुत खराब है ओके इंग्लिश द डज थिंक डोंट थिंक दैट इंग्लिश इज बेटर इंग्लिश इज आल्सो इक्वली बैड बिकॉज़ सो यू नो इंडिया वाज रूल्ड बाय ब्रिटिश राइट दे रूल्ड फॉर 200 इयर्स 1947 इंडिया गॉट फ्रीडम बट व्हाट वी कैन डू फॉर 200 इयर्स ऑफ एक्सप्लोइटेशन we cannot settle the score with them. This is the only one way I can do. Speak broken English, hurt them. Right? So this is the way of taking revenge against British. Speaking wrong English. That every Indian does. And I too do. So no other better way than doing this. Okay. Okay, thoda thoda Hindi baby. Hindi because I don't want to insult all of them. Chalega? Chalega? Okay, Hindi baby thoda. Before the time is over. So living in forest is very easy for me. People ask questions. Log puchte hai. Kaise rah sakte hai aap? Akele kaise rahte hai? Aapko dousro se baat nahi karna kya? I don't call anyone in general over the phone. People call, I receive call. I don't call, I don't. See, three things. There are four things before that. <laughs> what are my principles in my forest? Simplicity, solitude, silence, slowing, slow down. So simplicity, as simple as possible, live as close to animals as possible, at least in my forest. When I'm Going out, I don't look like a dozen. So, so I have to be like others. Otherwise, people not allow me to enter the halls. If I second is solitude. When you are alone, most of the wonderful things happen in life. Silence. Here, if I follow that, you don't have anything else to do. So I have to speak here, but non-speaking is the best way of speaking. The best way of communication is not speaking, silence. That I try to practice. See, when I accept these principles, life is so easy. Then fourth is slow down. We are too fast in our life. We want to do everything. We want to achieve this, that. So I don't have any hurry. I have long time. I don't know when I am going to die. So when I don't know the end, so I take it for granted, endless. Then. Then three things go. These are four principles I try to practice. So these are very core principles for being vegan, being vegan in the forest. If anyone comes, so please carry these principles, not other baggages. Then another three principles which guide me to live a happy life, contented life. Because I don't have anything unaccomplished in my life. There is nothing incomplete in my life. I don't want to do anything in my life. But still I keep doing something happens. So what are those three things? One is I don't chase people. I don't chase people for love. Okay, you should love me. You should respect me. You cannot insult me. No, you can insult me. You can trample upon me. You can do anything. So I accept that. I don't have any insult. I don't look for love for people. I was zero at that time, at the end of the festival. But at the end of the festival, I got some money. Someone deposited one lakh rupees in my account and went. He is not to be seen after that. So like this, it happened. Money came, money went. Money came, money went. If I get some money, I will do some work. If I don't get, I will sleep. 
no problem. <laughs> so, my activity is happening without looking for money, without chasing money. If someone gives, I take it happily with gratitude and it's used for some activity. But I don't ask money, I don't chase money. This is second chasing I stopped, I stopped doing. Third uh, chasing I stopped is chasing fame. People always look for fame. They want to be famous. They want to be recognized. They want their names to be appearing in newspapers here, there, everywhere. I don't want that. I want to live my life. Personally, I want to live my life alone, remaining life. So who wants this kind of life? People want in their old age, you want? People want in their old age, grandchildren, children, all, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, all together, taking care of them. I don't want anyone to take care of me. I'm happy. If a snake bites, this is a happy ending for me. It's so easy life. So when I have this approach, life is not at all difficult. Living in forest, coexisting with animals, plants, it is very, very easy. So I have so many plants. Of course, we, we, people may ask, don't you cut plants? Don't you eat plants? Of course, I add, eat plants. I don't eat plant-based food, I eat plant food. Because plant bees can have, based can have animal products also. Therefore, I don't use plant-based word also in my uh, talks. Because plant-based is 50% or more plant food. Remaining can be anything. It can be a plant also. Therefore, I eat plant sourced food or plant food. So, 100%. Therefore, I eat plants. Still, I exist with plants. How is it possible? People love animals. Still, they eat animals. It is same like that. Is it? In a way, it is. But in another way, it is not. Because we don't have any path, any, path, any route where we can live without eating plants. We can live without eating animals. Right? So I am living without eating animals or animal products for 23 years. So a lot of Marley is living for 28 years. There are a lot of people, Saurabh is of even same number of years, I think, right? How many years? 32. 22, see. So many years we can live without eating animals. But is there anyone who is alive here without eating plants? If anyone is there, I want to follow that path. <laughs> so there is no one so far whom I know. So there is no possibility of living without eating plants. To that extent I eat. But I don't want to cut plants. I built my house where there was no trees. It was empty land. Of course, most of the places were empty. But there were some old, useless for humans trees. There were some trees which are not used for building houses and all. Those kind of trees were there. Old trees. Those were there when I went. Those trees are there. Even now, even now they are there. That is supposed to uh, the place of where a ghost lives. Do you believe in ghosts? Bhut. Okay, please remind me. Yeah. We are all good? Okay. People used to say, so the, the tree, next old tree, was, there was an old tree. Next to that, I have a cottage. I live there. In that tree, people say, there used to be a Brahma Rakshas. Okay. Are you afraid? <laughs> okay. So Brahma Rakshas was living there and they used to offer chicken every year. This is a part of village. Tribals live there. <coughs> Tribals live. What's my time? 10 15 minutes. Okay, my story continues. <laughs> so, that place has a lot of ghosts. Now, I am the ghost. <coughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, I am the only ghost living there. <coughs> once, what happened? Once, uh, one lady Swami came to stay there. She was there for five days. I was alone, she was alone. She got angry for something. Because I don't talk much when I <laughs> in my forest. During events I speak. Otherwise I am on my own. Visitors also expected to be like that. So I was not sitting with her and talking. She got angry. She went out and sat somewhere near, near the road. In a white sari. In the evening, 6 o'clock, 
people villagers returning from their work <laughs> thought there is a ghost sitting and guarding me <laughs> or maybe my representative <laughs> so so i am protected by ghost some people think i am a ghost some people think i am protected by ghost so there is no threat for me at all <laughs> now there is no one in my forest all my belongings are kept outside so shika was there shika has seen i kept my dresses covers whatever books i keep outside there is nothing inside nothing inside i keep because i don't want a snake coming and hiding there that is only thing i keep outside so that snakes can move around easily so they don't have to search a hiding place so there is no robbery no stealing no fear nothing is there it is possible because i am a ghost <laughs> right it is very easy to be a ghost so for people it feels difficult to imagine a ghost living like a ghost it is not at all possible but for me it is possible so coexistence with plants and animals very easy coexistence with humans not so easy you need some principles we have been educating people don't do this don't do that don't do this do this do that we are educating 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 for thousands of years still still we are not able to find a solution for a happy living therefore coexisting with humans is not easy you need all the talks but coexisting with animals or plants very very easy then one more incident i need to tell you see i am living in a tribal area where people eat animals they are considered non vegetarians they slaughter animals for god they used to eat once a year or so now they eat little more frequent but still they are more or less vegetarian in normal days but recently i found out three persons who are vegans tribals vegans vegans they don't know vegan the world or concept the definition they don't know anything but they were not eating any animal products including meat and milk products or milk and milk products but probably they would not have seen or checked a packed food product which generally they don't buy a biscuit may contain some milk products they might eat that but they don't we consume milk or milk products so this is the beauty of living in a forest you find genuinely good people not hypocrites not a threat so these people are my friends my friends means i don't have to hug them and be with them but they don't harm me they don't trouble me they don't come ask for donation they don't come ask for some food they don't ask they are all self respecting very good nice indian sanatanis so they are very good so no harm so there is no threat at all for me one is my mental condition another is physical surrounding so in both ways there is no way i need to be afraid of if i have to be afraid of i have to be afraid of when i come out which i don't want to do unless it is for vegan work for my existence i don't want to come out frankly it is genuinely it is so for my existence see as it is i was talking to path so we are already big in number the forest or earth cannot sustain us i am extra i am ready to go any time so when my mental condition is like that i am not having any fear if you have any fear everything becomes problematic therefore so living in a forest is not difficult coexistence with plants and animals very easy no how many of you want to come to my forest and live with me okay okay good thank you very much for your time so what's what happened you know some people ask me i want to live like a uh, like in a, like you in a forest a lot of people used to ask and tell me then i posted a uh, posted in on facebook saying that who wants to withdraw from cities and live like we in some forest near my place there were some 400 responses i guess i remember i remember the statistics 400 people wanted to live like this because they are already tired of city life 
going to work, traveling, traffic jam, so expensive lifestyle, all the, they are already tired of. So many people wanted to come and live in a forest. Then I commented there itself, if you are serious about your willingness to come to forest, please give me your phone number. About 60 persons gave their phone number. Okay, out of 400, it came to 60. Then out of 60, I sent a message. So if you really want to come here and stay, before making your decision, make a visit first. Come here, see the locality. If you are serious, then I will find a way for you. Out of 60, one person came. <laughs> okay. Then did he come? That's she. She also didn't come. She of course, because we came with her two children and husband. So our four came. We decided not to come again. <laughs> okay. So with this, I can say confidently, I can invite you, all of you. <laughs> Doctor guided me. Give some tips how to manage arthritis. Don't climb stairs. Don't sit in Indian toilet. Right. You have to be very careful with your knees. She gave all the guidance. Then I broke everything. I can climb trees. I walk up eight, ten floors. Now all with my change of lifestyle, living in forest. So this, when phone used to come, I used to climb trees, run up, run up to the tree. People used to laugh. Okay, there was an easy climbing tree. Then I built a platform. Platform where I can climb and speak. That was about 10 feet high. That was made from some dead wood. I built it and I was climbed there. Then that also eaten by uh, termites. <laughs> <laughs> then I could protect. Now I built an iron tower, 20 feet iron tower, which I can climb. Many people fear climbing that because it is shaky. <laughs> it is wobbly. People don't want to climb there. Even youngsters. But I climb up. My online programs happen there. Because <laughs> there I get little better internet connection. Otherwise, in other places, I don't get any connection. So if there is an appointment to speak at a particular time, I climb up, sit there. Once there was a talk, and suddenly heavy rain. <laughs> I had an umbrella. <laughs> so it was a lot, lot of fun, but uh, connection was also, but voice was heard. So this is all some incidents living in forest. So we have a lot of interesting activities, interesting uh, things. But if you fear, the death comes now. If you are not afraid, you live forever. <laughs> so that is my message. So that is how I live. Time is up. Five more minutes. So Any questions? What do you eat? Sorry, I couldn't shift to Hindi when my broken English goes. <laughs> like Jatka Vaddi goes on. <laughs> yes, whatever. Yeah. Do you interact with animals? Interacting with animals? See, I don't force myself upon anyone. As I told you, I don't chase humans. Love me or hate me, I don't expect from any humans. Same is the case with the animals. I apply that. Because I don't chase animals. If I chase, they will run away. Same happens with humans also. So do they approach? See, when, I am, when they realize that I am harmless, because in generations, by over generations, in their genes, they fear humans. Hmm. Most animals fear humans. Most wild animals. I'm talking about wild animals. They fear humans because humans have done so much atrocities. Therefore, in general, if they look this figure, they don't come closer to us. But over the years, they have started trusting me. <clears throat> they come closer to me. So, see, when I move around, they don't come cl closer. If I sit meditating, they will be walking around, they will be moving around, they will be sitting close, they will be doing monkeys particularly, peacocks, these animals. Then there will be rabbits, mongoose, all these animals moving around. If I am constant, I can see them close distance. If I am moving, they won't come closer. Because they have their survival instinct. They have to survive. Right? So, oh, forest. My forest is in forest. That is the Western Ghats. <laughs> it is in Western Ghats. It is Karnatak, south of Goa, 200 kilometers south of Goa. It is a world heritage place, biodiversity. So there is some restrictions. But still humans do all the 
illegal activities. So I am still legally there because I bought the land. I bought the land because I wanted to live in a forest actually, but government doesn't allow us to live in a forest. Even entering a forest requires permission and payment of fees. At present I don't know, but it was 200 rupees to enter a forest, reserve forest. If I go and uh, stay in a forest, they will put cases and I will not be able to live there. So I built my own forest. So I live there, there is no threat from anyone. So this is how it is now. Any questions? A few minutes. Yes. So, uh, Hindi, 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 Hindi. So, when you have principles applied here, hmm. what the motive behind it? And uh, after applying all the principles, now what's your <coughs> take? Of course, my take is most principles. Did you get what you are finding? Or uh, did you achieve what you want to achieve? Or now, what's the thing? What's the next thing? So actually, I am a vegan by birth, you can say. Vegan naturally, I say that. Vegan naturally means I am a vegan by default. I learned some bad habits, I discontinued that. Okay? So therefore, city was also not my natural living place. I was living in a village where there was no electricity. I was born in such a place, very remote place, about 10 kilometers from my present place. My parents were living there. And I was not comfortable at all in city life with uh, all artificial dressing, artificial talking, artificial smile. Everything was artificial. There was nothing natural to it. So you have to forcefully do whether you like it or not. <coughs> I was living in Bangalore. I went to Bangalore in 1986. So for 10 years I was there. It was suffocating for me. I wanted to quit and come back. This job, bas, mujhe nahi chahiye. Ye paisa kamana nahi chahiye. Jina hai. That was, I had already planned by then. Okay, same time I got a broad appointment, I went there. So at that time I was ready to come back. Then again, after going there, I was not feeling comfortable. I wanted to come back. My boss asked me to stay back. Then again, two years I extended. Then I came back. <coughs> and his certificate is on my website still. I value that. It's the most valuable certificate I got from anyone about my working style. I never ask for money even in working place. So if I am good, they will pay me and keep. If I am bad, I will not be able to stay there. That was my approach. So that is how I never liked city life. When I went back, it was quite easy for me. It was not at all difficult. So that was my purpose is solved. But see, people, what happens? People don't accept something different. So when I returned from Dubai, I immediately became vegan. And people found it strange. So, for the first few years, I was not an activist. I was just <coughs> vegan myself. Then I started telling others. I started printing a leaflet. There was no literature in Indian languages at that time. I printed a book, small booklet. I started distributing. And with all these, people started finding more strangeness in me. Forget about outside people. In my own family, People didn't like my activism. First victim was my wife. She felt threatened by my vegan activism. She said to all people, my husband's mind is bad. She has to give her a little psychiatric treatment. She has to give her a little bit. She wants my husband, but she doesn't want her husband. She has to give her a little bit. So they took it upon themselves. They took me to psychiatrist, they gave me some treatment. <laughs> okay, then finally, it is not going to work like this. This man is not going to change. My wife left me in 2005. Till then I was thinking, only 10% of my income I spent for vegan work. I didn't have much income at that time, I had already returned from my job. Once my wife, the wife left, there was nothing else for me to save money or keep money. I brought up my son all along. That is another matter. So now, so that also happened. That's a part of my forest life. People ask how, uh, why, did your wife support you? Did your family support you indirectly? People are very sensitive to ask about my wife. So they say, <laughs> does your family support you? <laughs> I am not shy. It's a fact, it's a fact. I have to tell the truth. So my wife left in 2005, August 3. 
That's 18 years now. I'm married for 30 years now. So we were <laughs> together for 11 plus years. So, so that also helped me living in forest, along with animals and plants. It is funny now. It was not so funny at that time. <laughs> it was very painful. That is why I kept my forest name Sthitupranya. Sthitupranya taken from Bhagavad Gita. I was mentally very volatile, crying, lot of disturbance. But vegan focus was there. But I was very disturbed mind. At that time, some a friend of mine suggested me to read Bhagavad Gita. I read Bhagavad Gita. I liked this Sthitupranya concept. I kept the name my forest. So that gave me a lot of mental strength. So now I live uh, a lifestyle which is in align with, alignment with Bhagavad Gita. If I read Bhagavad Gita, my lifestyle imitates or it is reflected there. So I get more confidence, I am not wrong. So living like this is all. So these are all so many aspects. Thank you very much for your question. Hope I answered your question. I accomplished my... Meaning of that word? Sthita Pradhyay is stable-minded, focused on God. Okay, you can be stable-minded in bad things also. But you cannot be stable-minded or focused on God, uh, bad things. You have to be focused on good things. That is God. God cannot be bad. God is good. If one is bad, he cannot be good. Okay. Time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. <laughs>